Hello, my name is Trash and that's my first channel at YouTube. And as you can see, that was a different intro. Yes, I have given the um the uh, discography reviews its own series it's, uh, uh, because I was getting pretty bored of having it under the fucking reviews. So it's time. So it was time to give it its own reviews uh, series, and the first. The first one to kick off the discography reviews is the Exumer Studio Album Discography Reviews. Since the Raging Tides has getting released uh, in a few days, it's time to go back. Let's travel back to 1986, whenever people were first uh, getting uh, introduced to this band. Now, there was a demo released before it, but that was mostly being sold at shows, uh, mostly either locally or, you know, such as that. Or it was uh, being used as like a, a promotional demo or some sort. But it was their debut album that would introduce most people to this band. And that debut album is, of course, Possessed by Fire, which is... No, I did not live in 1986, hence my age, but when I was first getting into thrash metal, this, um, like around 2009, 2010, this band was popping up, and of course it was that album. It, in recent years, it's being regarded as a classic amongst thrash metal, even just German thrash metal as well, or, or just really thrash metal in general. However, my but those the thing is, is it really considered that classic? Does it really have that magic that uh, Metallica made with their debut album Kill 'Em All? Is it with or you know is it can be held uh, against that? Can be held against uh, other thrash metal classics such as Ride the Lightning, such as Master of Puppets, even though I don't think it's that much of a classic, or is it uh, or Let's say Rain and Blood, or in my personal opinion, Show No Mercy, Hello Waits by Slayer, or um, Spreading the Disease, and Among the Living by Anthrax. Is it? Does it have that same classic status? Does it really deserve that classic status? In many ways, it actually does deserve its classic status. There's many, there's not really any low points or high points in this album. Everything ends up, uh, running along very smoothly of course with, within the intro which is just called the intro which is what kicks off the album very much uh, got that eerie sort of sense since um, it was the norm for most thrash metal bands to actually go for that more of a cult uh, horror movie like uh, you know sound or some that uh, theme well the only band that, that, that didn't really do all of this was Metallica even though they've had some songs that kind of push the boundaries to being kind of, you know, um, satanic or something. But Exumer were one who definitely uh, flirted with all of it, uh, kind of putting them next to bands such as Slayer, such as even early Megadeth or um, Exodus or something. And this album uh, indeed does have some uh, direct... Um, Direct, uh, fuck. Let's just say, um, little similarities to Exodus, especially their debut album, Bottom by Blood. But the album starts off with the intro before kicking into the title track, which pretty much ends up, uh, kind of giving you, uh, it, it just it gives way to what to really expect from the album. It's a raging thrasher of an album, even though there's definitely some slow point. Uh, some kind of, you know, some points where they kind of slow it down to give the listeners some room to breathe, which is within the uh, track uh, Destructive uh, Solution, which has uh, some uh, acoustic bits before, which is very much nice, very m uh, melodic a uh, bit during that part, with, um, you know, uh, especially some killer guitar work as well. There's definitely quite a bit of uh, room to breathe on this sound. There's quite a bit of a uh, little bit of variety, a little bit 
not too diversity, but there's enough uh, pace to, to um, you know, without losing any of its uh, energy, any of its uh, its power. And even within uh, songs such as Immortal in Black, uh, Silent Death, um, Zero and Dark Star, uh, fuck, uh, Fallen Saint. Yes, I am definitely correct. Um, there, uh, there really isn't a uh, Reign of Sadness as well as another great one, uh, Sorrow of a... Yeah, Sorrows of a Judgment, uh, Reign of uh, Sadness, of course, and Journey to Oblivion. There really isn't a bad song on this album. Every bit of song just has enough punch, enough kick to keep the listener from being bored. It, uh, this is indeed deserving of its classic status. Definitely, I would say it's definitely, I will put it up against some of the best debut albums of all time. Some might not think that this isn't, uh, of course, when you go on the review, uh, Metal Archive, some of the reviews kind of like, they seem to kind of shit on it at times, almost don't really think that it's not really as deserving of its classic status. People who probably think, uh, who just want to keep jerking off to the same fucking albums all, all the time, instead of giving some uh, uh, other albums a little bit of, you know, some love or something, they really don't want to uh, go that far. Besides all that, besides the sound being considered a classic, can the same be said for the follow-up album? which would come out in the year of 1987. Before we get to that, let's definitely say, um, let, me, let me just add in that, what did you think of this album, though? Do you think that it's uh, deserving of its classic status? Do you think it's a good album? Do you think it's probably not that deserving of its classic status? Or do you think that it's... Um, you know, a shitty album or something. What is your true, honest opinion on this album? Have you even heard it? Of course, you probably have, since Exumer has become pretty big nowadays. Until then, this is everything I'm actually saying. I am out. If you haven't even heard Exumer yet, this is definitely a great starting point.